Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be going in depth into my week number 16 quarterback start or sit decisions for the 2023 fantasy football season. But before we could get on into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure they do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at Notorious. FNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into my week number 16 quarterback start or sit decisions for the 2023 fantasy football season. We begin with Thursday Night Football, the New Orleans Saints at the Los Angeles Rams. Now, Matthew Stafford is going to be a start for me on the week. Stafford has now been a top 12 quarterback in four straight games, completely changing my perception of him. Now, early on in the season, for the first nine games of the season, so for the beginning and a lot of the middle of the season, this was a guy that only threw more than one touchdown once. And now he has done that in four straight games against the Saints. I expect yet another top 12 performance out of Matthew Stafford. I think he is a stone cold lock to finish as a top 12 quarterback. Now, Derek Carr may have actually looked solid last week against the Giants, but don't let that fool you. Just because he went 23 of 28 for 218 yards and three touchdowns against the Giants after playing like Jamarcus fucking Russell all season should not change your opinion on Derek Carr going against the Rams defense will be a tough task for Carr and I believe that he is best left on your bench next up we move to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Pittsburgh Steelers this is a game on Saturday 4 30 p.m eastern standard time now Mason Rudolph the red nose reindeer will be the starting quarterback for the Steelers on Saturday and frankly Mason Rudolph just isn't very good now if you thought that Kenny Pickett and Mitch Trubisky were bad Honestly, it may get a lot worse with Mason Rudolph, right? Not just a little worse, right? Way worse. I would sooner bet on Alex Moran, the starting quarterback for Blue Mountain State, over Rudolph. So you're definitely going to want to sit him down, even though his holiday is coming up just a couple of days after that game. Jake Browning. Now, I had my doubts when it came to Jake Browning last week, as I thought that he would end up being a potential dud against the Vikings. Now, I did list him as a start, but he was in the fringe start range because, again, the matchup really concerned me. Browning then proceeded to fuck around and go for 29 of 42 for 324 yards and two touchdowns with one INT, making it now three straight games as a top eight quarterback for Browning. Now, I once again am pretty hesitant to bang the metaphorical drum for Jake Browning because of the fact that it's not the defense this time. It's just because this is an AFC North division rivalry matchup, and I think this game probably ends up being relatively low scoring, especially since I don't think Mason Rudolph is going to push the Bengals into a scenario where Jake Browning needs to throw two or more touchdowns in order to win. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Browning threw one touchdown, Mixon ran in two, and this game ended in a massacre that was never even really close. But it was still low scoring because the Steelers offense can not move the ball. Now, I still believe in Browning as being a potential top eight quarterback guy because we've seen it this season already, but he is back in the fringe start range because, again, I think this will be a lower scoring game. And I think not having Jamar Chase is obviously going to suck for Jake Browning. Again, it's not going to sink his metaphorical battleship. But obviously, going from having Jamar Chase to not having Jamar Chase is going to hurt. Next up, we move to Saturday Night Football, the Buffalo Bills at the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, despite the Buffalo Bills dancing on the grave of the Dallas Cowboys last Sunday, right? They hit the fucking hee-hee, the moonwalk on the Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills hit that on the Cowboys' grave. It didn't really actually affect Josh Allen because despite this being a massacre, Josh Allen only threw the ball 15 times for seven completions and 94 yards. Now, sure, he had eight rushes for 24 yards and scored two total touchdowns. But at the end of the day, Josh Allen definitely let you down. And if you started Josh Allen in your first week of the playoffs, you might have ended up very disappointed. 
now, you're still watching the video in week 16, so I assume you were able to advance to this stage of the playoffs, but obviously, it was something that you had to overcome. Now, he gets to go up against the Chargers defense that he should be able to carve up easily like the Thanksgiving turkey. This Chargers defense just got absolutely skull-fucked by Aiden O'Connell. So imagine what Josh Allen is going to do. He will be a top three quarterback in my rankings and could easily be the quarterback one on the week. Now, Easton Stick is going to be a sit but he actually didn't look half bad in the massacre game of Thursday night football by the Raiders. Now, obviously, the Raiders destroyed them, right? It wasn't even a remotely close game. I think at one point it was like 40 something to zero. So it was never even a game that the Chargers were in, but that was just because the defense really was that bad. Like, stick. I know it didn't do much in the first half, but 23 of 32 for 257 yards and three touchdowns with an INT. Stick could be fine here in garbage time, right? He might fall ass backwards into throwing two touchdowns. But frankly, with so many other solid quarterbacks to start on the week, there's no need to risk it and start Easton Stick. Now we move to the Sunday slate of games, the Indianapolis Colts at the Atlanta Falcons, and Taylor Heineke is back as the starting quarterback for the Falcons, which is good for all of us who actually enjoy watching a quarterback take some chances. You know, we've seen Taylor Heineke in the past as the commander starting quarterback, and he's had some fun games. Am I going to sit here and blow Taylor Heineke metaphorically, right? Give him the gawk gawk 9,000 special and say that he's eight gazillion times better than Desmond Ritter. Fuck no, baby, because that's not the case, but at least maybe Heineke will do something fun here. You can definitely still make an argument that Ritter might be better than Heineke, and to be honest with you, I won't even argue with that too much. Now, the best thing about this move coming isn't actually for this season, but to me, it shows us that Arthur Smith's back is against the wall, right? Arthur Smith has been pushed against the ropes, and he's battling for himself to keep that job. So if you are someone that likes the Atlanta Falcons players and hates Arthur Smith, just like every single person on earth, you should root for the Indianapolis Colts laying a smackdown brother on the Atlanta Falcons so that Arthur Smith can hopefully get fired. Again, this matchup for Heineke is solid against the Colts defense, but with Arthur Smith still as the head coach, with things just going so wrong for the Falcons, there's no reason to start their starting quarterback in a fucking playoff game. Gardner Minshew the second. Minshew made the Steelers' defense look like the commander's defense, going 18 of 28 for 215 yards and three tugs. This week against the Falcons, I definitely expect a worse game, not because the Falcons' defense is better than the Steelers' defense, but because I just don't expect him to be as good without Michael Pittman. I still think he will at the very least be a top 18 guy as three of his last four games. He was a top 18 quarterback and the matchup is fine for him. But again, not having Michael Pittman could end up being the reason why Minshew has much more of a down game. Now, I know Nick Minshew didn't have Pittman for a majority of that game last week. I understand but it still obviously worries me because Pittman is clearly the best wide receiver on this team, and it is not even remotely close. Next up, we move to the Seattle Seahawks at the Tennessee Titans. Now, Ryan Tannehill is expected to be the signal caller. The QB won on Sunday with Will Levis, hurting his ankle this past weekend. Now, Tannehill is a perfectly serviceable quarterback. He's what you want in a backup quarterback, right? He's not going to do enough to straight up put the team on his back like fucking horsecock Drew Locke and win you the game, but he is good enough to not throw a bunch of dumb interceptions to, you know, work in a Titans offense that is a run-first offense, right? A team that wants to run, Tannehill is first, or is perfect for game managing that, right? He is a very serviceable quarterback, and it wouldn't shock me if somehow the Titans ended up beating the Seahawks. But just because he's a serviceable quarterback, just because he's not going to make a bunch of mistakes, doesn't mean that you actually want him in your starting lineup. In six games, he had just two games where he scored a single 
fucking touchdown. Now, I will always love Will, or not, I will not always love Will Levis. I do love Will Levis, but I will always love Ryan Tannehill since I'm a Dolphins fan, right? Tannehill, while he never actually did much as a Dolphins quarterback, it was always fun to root for him. I always will believe in this guy, and I like what he's done in Tennessee, but again, it's 2023. It's not fucking 2021, right? It's not a couple years ago when Tannehill was playing well, so... Right now, against the Seahawks defense, that looks a lot better than I thought they would. I don't expect Tannehill to do very much. Geno Smith has missed two games in a row now, including, including, including a horse cock Drew Locke legendary masterclass performance up against the Eagles. He absolutely sliced and diced his way through the Eagles. Now, Geno is expected to make a full recovery and play on Sunday. From what I have read, he's expected to practice for the full week and will be the signal caller for the Seahawks on Sunday. Geno's last game out, he was the quarterback one against the Cowboys, passing for over 300 yards, shout out Leonidas, and four touchdowns with an interception. Now, I don't expect Geno to necessarily be that great again, right? I don't think anyone should. Because... That Geno that showed up against the Dallas Cowboys in Jerry's World had that great game. That is not the version of Geno we've seen for a majority of this season, right? The version of Geno has been closer to like Jets Geno Smith than it has been the Seattle Geno from last year. But maybe he's turned the page, right? Maybe he's turned another leaf on the season. And I think Geno should look fine against the Titans again. The Titans defense is pretty bad. So he should be a quarterback 10 to 16 10 to 14 range definitely top 10 upside but again coming off the injury I don't feel 100% confident in touting him as a top 10 guy next up we got the Detroit Lions at the cold like Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota now after everyone not just in America across the entire globe started to worry a bit about Goff this man decided to walk the Broncos like a dog on Saturday night football, passing for 278 yards, and not one, not two, not three, not four, but five fucking touchdowns right down the throat of Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. Now this week, against the Vikings defense, this could be a letdown spot, right? Jared Goff is riding high and mighty, right? Jared Goff just slayed the Broncos, who were a team that a lot of people were kind of like, ooh, the Lions are skidding. Maybe the Broncos can win. I thought, hey, maybe the Broncos would win. Nope, not even fucking close. But the Vikings defense can be good, right? Brian Flores' defense can and will put a quarterback in a mental pretzel. But anytime that Goff plays in a dome, he typically plays well. So even against the Vikings defense, this is in a dome. This is in Minnesota. I expect him to finish at minimum as a top 12 quarterback. Now, 9-inch Nick Mullins. Before I was making this video, I always look at the expert consensus rankings on Fantasy Pros, right? And I try to figure out, hey, what are other people thinking? Now, I'm not sitting there just copying what other people are thinking because that is clear here because Nick Mullins, 9-inch Nicholas Mullins, is the quarterback 16 on Fantasy Pros. And I fully understand, right, for a majority of this season, the Lions defense has been a fucking punching bag, right? A right elbow from KSI type deal, right? And I get it, right? The defense has sucked donkey cock. But with that said, we just saw a bit of life out of that Lions defense. Now, I'm not saying that they've been fully resurrected like The Undertaker or something, but I think based upon how they looked against the Broncos, it gives me some pause into thinking Nick Mullins will be balls deep in the Lions defense on Sunday. Now, again, I get that Mullins played solid against Cincy, right? Mullins was a lot better than most expected. 26 to 33 for 303 yards and two touchdowns with two INTs. But again, this is another scenario where there are just so many other solid quarterbacks to start that with the Lions defense percolating a little bit and with it being Nick Mullins after all, I would definitely rather just sit Mullins down. Next up, we move to the Washington Commanders going up against the New York Jumbo Jets in Gotham Met Life. Now, the Jets have, quote-unquote, activated Aaron Rodgers, not so he can play, but because he could practice. Uh, practice? What you talking about? Practice? I don't understand why they are doing that. Because now you're keeping up a roster spot for a guy that is not going to play. Now, I wonder what their situation is going to be on Sunday. 
if Zach Wilson doesn't play. Like, now again, I'm not rooting for injuries. I hope Zach Wilson can play. If Zach Wilson doesn't play, it'll be Trevor Simeon. But what happens if Zach Wilson doesn't play and then Trevor Simeon gets hurt, right? What happens in that case? Is Rodgers going in there or are they going to let Garrett Wilson play quarterback or something? That's a very interesting scenario, but exactly what everyone expected, right? I know there was all these rumors about Aaron Rodgers coming back. The guy is a liar. The guy loves everyone to be chit-chatting about Aaron Rodgers. He loves himself. I love myself as well, right? I think anyone that makes YouTube videos kind of likes themselves a little bit too much, you know? So, you know, me and Rodgers might be a little bit the same, right? No one that, you know, doesn't have a high thought of themselves would sit on here and talk about fucking anything on YouTube for like 30 plus minutes in every video like I do. But again, I don't think I'm like a self-absorbed person or anything like that, but I just think anyone that is able to put themselves out there kind of has a strong belief or a strong ego in themselves. But Rodgers, like again, admirable trying to come back, right? I'm not saying that Aaron Rodgers, some puss, pussy, some bitch made guy for not coming back, but I think this is what we all expected. So to break down this game in reality, right? We don't need to talk about Aaron Rodgers for an hour. That's exactly what he would want us to do. But Sam, how got tugged out of last week's game? Like he was Robert Kraft in a massage parlor in Florida. Since Howell looked like straight up dog shit against the Ram and Brissett came in and balled out I know Howell's the guy. They're going back to Howell. And while Howell's been great all season, these playoff matchups are concerning. He gets the Jumbo Jets, then he gets the 49ers, right? And again, while the Jets just got spit roasted by the Dolphins, I don't think that's going to happen from the Commanders. And the fact that he got benched tells me that even if Sam Howell, you know, maybe you believe in Sam Howell, if he struggles early on, he might be getting yanked out again, right? So... I definitely don't think you want anything to do with Howell. Now, Zach Wilson, according to Robert Salah, a.k.a. Xerces from 300, he said that Wilson will be the starter if he's able to clear concussion protocol. Which makes sense, because I don't think anyone wants to watch Trevor Simeon suit up as the starting quarterback, right? We saw it against the Dolphins, where Zach Wilson gets benched, or not gets benched, but gets hurt, then we get Trevor Simeon, and Trevor Simeon fucking sucks. So... Zach Wilson is still in the concussion protocol on Wednesday. If he does play, this is a solid matchup for him against a sorry excuse for an NFL defense. But the problem is this O-line for the Jets is such a disaster that Zach could get hurt again. Now, knock on wood again. We're not rooting for injuries here. I'm just being honest with you. The Jets offensive line is about as useful as bringing a Nerf gun to a knife fight, right? You shoot the Nerf gun, and then you end up getting fucking stabbed in the neck. So sit Zach, even if he plays. If Zach isn't able to suit up, then we get to watch Trevor Simeon play quarterback. How enjoyable, right? Everyone's so excited about that on Christmas Eve. Simeon is not good at all, and I wouldn't waste any of our times by starting him. Next up, we move to the Green Bay Packers at the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Packers defense let down Jordan Love on Sunday against the Buccaneers as Jordan, love me tender, love me sweet, had a pretty solid game. 29-39 for 284 yards and two touchdowns. Now, that tear that he went on from weeks 11 through 13 feels like a bit of a distant future, even if it was just a couple weeks ago at this point but against the Panthers defense I fully expect him to have a much bigger game he should be a top 14 guy and I'm very excited to see how he plays up against the Panthers defense now Bryce Young if for some reason you have Bryce Young on your team and you're playing in anything outside of like a 24 team league what are you doing Bryce Young hasn't scored over 10 points since week nine. As a quarterback, it is legitimately difficult to not score 10 points, right? You could just fall ass backwards into 10 fantasy points if you are a semi-competent quarterback. And this bastard, this motherfucker, was the first overall pick. Now again, Nick, the setup for him isn't great, this, that, and the other thing. I get it, right? I try not to slander Bryce Young, and I do really think he still has the skills to pay the bills, right? I don't think he's some huge bust like Zach Wilson who we just talked about, but I just can't stand the guy, even against a Packers defense that is getting bent over the table weekly, like their name was Lana Rhodes. I don't trust Bryce Young. Next up, we move to the Cleveland Browns at the Houston Texans. Cool Joe has been a top 13 quarterback ever since he became the starter for the Browns. Last week against the Bears, he went 28 of 44. And the fun thing about Flacco is he's going to throw like 
40 plus times every single game, even though they have Kareem Hunt and the fact that they have uh, the other running back there, Jerome Ford, F-150, they still just throw a gazillion times. And it's so fun to watch Flacco throw 45 plus times. I assume his arm is just permanently like in the ice bath for like a week. They just ice his arm up and then let him loose again every Sunday. He throw through... He throw, he threw for 374 yards and two touchdowns. Three INTs, though, but he was still the quarterback nine. This man is so fun to watch. I love cool Joe Flacco, and I'll have him ranked as a top 14 quarterback yet again on the week. Now, at this point, it really does feel like C.J. Stroud will not be able to suit up for the Texans, thus giving Case Keenum another crack at things. Keenum was good enough to beat the Titans, but that isn't really saying much since he only scored 12 fantasy points against the Browns' defense. That Browns D strikes fear in my eyes. Pause. Definitely don't want anything to do with Case Keenum. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the start of the 4 o'clock slate. But before we break down this game at the quarterback position, as well as the rest of the games all the way up through the three games on Christmas, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play NFL Pick'em in the whole entire universe, and today, Underdog Fantasy has a great offer for you guys, but first, I want to explain to you how the NFL Pick'em game works. So you have to pick a minimum of two players from at least two different teams. So we're talking about the Eagles versus Seahawks Monday Night Football matchup in Seattle. So Jalen Hurts may or may not play. I, as of right now, I'm leaning closer to him not playing. So we're going to go with Jake Elliott, higher than one and a half field goals made. I think Mariota will be able to get them into field goals goal range and maybe not able to get him closer to the end zone so Elliott higher than one and a half field goals made and then for the Seahawks they might be having Drew Locke under center they might have Geno Smith either way up against the Eagles defense I expect DK Metcalf to go higher than 61 and a half receiving yards now if both of these picks hit you will get three times your entry fee if you do three picks it's six times four picks is 10 times and five picks is 20 times your entry fee now if you're brand new to underdog fantasy and you live in one of these states on your screen right now. If you use promo code Notorious, you will get a first match deposit bonus of up to $100. So you deposit $100, they give an additional $100, you do $50, additional $50, $25, and additional $25. The minimum deposit on Underdog Fantasy is $10. If you have a gambling problem, please make sure that you call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back on into things here, Jaguars at the Buccaneers. The most recent report on Trevor Lawrence is that he is in concussion protocol today on Wednesday, but is progressing well, which does point towards him potentially being to suit up on Sunday. But even if he does suit up, he's closer to the fringe start range for me. He was definitely very disappointing on Sunday, and the Bucks' defense is a little underrated, now, if for some reason Lawrence isn't able to go, then you're not starting Big Dick Bethard. Baker Mayfield, Baker Baker, touchdown maker, wiped the floor with the Packers defense that we kind of just made fun of a couple of seconds ago. Going 22 of 28 for 381 yards and four touchdowns with zero turnovers as the quarterback too against the Jaguars defense that has seen better days I expect him to be a top 12 QB on the week next up we got the Arizona Cardinals at the Chicago Chicago Bears now Justin Fields had a down game last week against the Browns in Cleveland but you could have seen that coming from roughly a mile away now I still leaned with Fields as a start because of his rushing upside but I told you guys last week, like, would it be shocking at all if Fields shit the bed? And the answer was no, and that's exactly kind of what happened. Now, Fields did throw a dime to Darnell. Here comes the Mooney to win the game that Mooney dropped. So Fields actually could have had a much better day if Darnell Mooney just had hands. But, again, you know, the, the week comes to a close. Fields shits the bed against the Browns, and no one should have been surprised, like, at all. This week, though, reeks of a bounce back. You can smell it through the screen. The Cardinals defense is Charmin ultra soft, and I expect Fields to rip off a top five, top five, top five game this week. Now, Kyler Murray also let down last week, but it was another game where no one would be surprised at all, right? Going up against the 49ers defense is a tough task for any quarterback. And with how great the 49ers defense is, we kind of all knew, hey, Kyler could have a down game. Now, he still went 26 to 39 for 211 yards, but he threw two INTs, just one touchdown. Against the Bears' defense, I will definitely acknowledge that they are not some pushover, right? They're not some garbage defense. 
Kyler should still, though, be a top 12 quarterback on the week. Next up, we got the Dallas Cowboys at the Miami Dolphins, the greatest football team. So Dak Prescott, despite playing like Ray fucking Charles on Sunday, he couldn't read the Bills defense to save his life. It was like when Floyd Mayweather tries to read a page of Harry Potter or even Cat in the Hat, Redfish, Blue, Redfish? What's that book called? It's like Redfish, Bluefish, right? Everyone knows that book. So Dak's chances of being the MVP have been hit with the stone cold stunner. What? Right? Not looking too great for Dak winning MVP. It seems like Brock Purdy is going to end up winning MVP, which is crazy. Um, Dak went 21 of 34 for 134 yards and a pick. Well, that sucked. Dak has been one of the most reliable quarterbacks this season, ever since the bye week. Now, when the season started, not very reliable at all, but ever since that bye week, he's been ripping off big games, so I won't sit here and tell you guys to panic. As a Dolphins fan, I hope Dak looks terrible. I hope Dak turns the ball over 17 times. But as someone that is an honest man, I'm just an honest man, I will tell you that I like him as a top six quarterback this week. Now, Tua played great against the Jets, but not every time someone plays great on the field does it actually equal a lot of fantasy points because going 21 of 24 for 224 yards and a touchdown is a good day, right? Three incompletions, Basically destroyed the Jets defense. He threw a fucking nuclear war missile from, um, I don't know. Was that like a 47-yard touchdown? Something like that from Tua to Waddle. Great, right? It was one of those war heads that had a, had a pointy, a pointy head so that it would stick down there, right? If we, anyone's watched The Dictator, you know what I mean. If it uh, doesn't, I can't even do fucking The Dictator's voice. Shout out to Borat. Wawa Wiwa, who plays the dictator in that movie. If you haven't seen that, make sure you watch that. But uh, Tua is going to be a fringe top 12 guy for me this week. Now, my hopes are that this, I, I actually don't hope this is a high-scoring game, but for fantasy, the hope is this is a high-scoring game. Irik comes back, and the Dolphins are able to play well against this Cowboys defense that just got plowed by the Bills. Again, I'm not 100% confident in Tua. I'm a lot more confident in Dak, though. Next up, we got the New England Patriots at the Denver Broncos. Because you waited all day for Sunday night. Mr. Unlimited versus the Patriots. Uh, Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson, had a fine fantasy day last Saturday in Detroit, despite the Broncos getting steam rolled, going 18 of 32 for 223 yards and two scores. I don't expect a huge showing here up against a pretty underrated Pats defense, but finishing anywhere from quarterback 14 to 18 makes sense. The Zappinata, Bailey Zappi, came back down to earth against the Chiefs after looking mighty fine like Sidney Sweeney's rack against the Steelers the week prior. I will always enjoy watching Bailey Zappi, right? I will always think that watching Bailey Zappi is fun, but I don't even think he's going to be a top 24 quarterback on the week. Now we move to Christmas, the Las Vegas Raiders at the Kansas City Chiefs 1 p.m. EST. Open your presents up a little early. I, I don't know, if you're someone with kids, right? What time do the kids wake you up? Probably like 7 a.m., 6 a.m. I was probably some douchebag as a kid waking my parents up early because I loved Christmas. As a kid, still do now. Happy holidays to everyone. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you guys are having a good one. The Christmas feeling, the holiday feeling always makes me very happy. Now, obviously, as a football fan, it sucks because the season's almost over, but there is always something special about Christmas. Now, Patrick Mahomes has not been good for fantasy three straight weeks now. Obviously, Mahomes isn't going to stab your team up like Johnny did the Bob in The Outsiders to save Pony Boy's life, stay golden, Pony Boy. But being the quarterback 14, 20, and 16 in three straight weeks is not ideal, especially when you're Patrick Mahomes. Now, obviously, Mahomes is done no favors by the fact that his wide receiver core can't catch anything outside of Rashi Rice and Travis Kelsey. Last time against... The Raiders in Vegas in Week 12, he was the quarterback eight. So I still think he'll be a top 10 guy, but you can't rank Mahomes as like the quarterback one here or a top three, top five quarterback, even like a top eight guy until he proves otherwise. Aiden O'Connell turned into prime Peyton Manning last week against the Chargers, passing for 248 yards and four touchdowns against a defense that might not even be able to stop me if I play quarterback or one of you guys could have tagged in. 
could have thrown for a touchdown against that defense, right? I expect a full back down to earth game on Monday morning for Aiden O'Connell. Next up, we move to the New York football giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles, I don't think, have won a game since that fat bastard Dom was banned for smacking a guy. So, you know, the Eagles are, uh, they're not flying too high, right? Like in fucking Duck Hunt, man. The bird got shot and it's falling down. Now, despite a losing effort against the Seahawks in Seattle on Monday Night Football, Hurts still ran enough to finish as a top five quarterback. This week, with him not being sick, I like his chances to be a top five quarterback again or even the quarterback one. But if you are an Eagles fan, let me know in the comment section. Like, are you worried? Like, how worried are you? Like, on a scale of one to 10, I, I would say, like, just watching the Eagles, like, thinking about how far the Eagles could make it in the playoffs, like, I'd be on like a 7 out of 10, maybe even an 8 out of 10 on panic on like the Eagles might not even make the NFC Championship. Tommy DeVito, Tommy Cutlet shit the bed against the Saints in a game in which he got banged up. The Eagles defense certainly looked better with Mr. Pencil in the year, Matt Patricia, calling the plays. DeVito's Linsanity run is officially over, so it's time to just list him as a sit. I mean, he was a sit even when he was going crazy, but even more so, he's a sit now. Final game here, Monday Night Football. Christmas, 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Ravens at 49ers. Now, big cock Brock Purdy has been a top six quarterback now in three straight games, and I am ready for him to do it yet again. I know people love the Ravens defense. I'm not going to sit here and take a dump on the metaphorical chest of the Ravens defense because they're very good. But this man being a top six quarterback in five of the last six games has me strongly believing that he'll be able to do it yet again. I am not worried one bit about Brock. When it comes to Lamar, I am definitely a little bit more worried, which we're going to talk about because Lamar has been kind of up and down all season and because Lamar doesn't have Debo, Ayuk, CMC, and Kittle. For Lamar Jackson, I definitely am worried, like I just kind of hinted at, right? While his weapons are good on paper, they kind of have the tendency to shrivel up like your balls when it gets cold. So I definitely have a good reason to be worried about Lamar Jackson. Now, he's too good to be ranked outside of the top 10, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if this week ended and he was like the quarterback 18 to 20. I also wouldn't be surprised if this was a good old-fashioned shootout and he was the quarterback one on the week. So I'm going to rank him as a top 10 guy, but I do really think there's reasons to be a little bit worried, especially since this is in San Francisco and not at home. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying today's video, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure they do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNT. S Y. If you want to check out my Patreon, you can get my weekly rankings on there, as well as an answer to any of the questions you guys may have for $7.50 a month. Love you guys all so much. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Have a great one. As always, good boy!